Hi, my name is Ben Davids. Um, I'm representing Oddfellows in Chester in the Havana Grand Prix. Uh, today I'm making a cobbler. This is a, da- a drink that dates back to the early 18th century. Um, the most famous incarnationist being the sherry cobbler. Um, late 19th century, it was the most popular drink in North America, America, if not the world. Um, it was drunk by men and women alike. And this is really what sort of threw this whole idea today together. I really want to make a drink that everyone enjoys, not just your martini fan, but some, you run of the mill customer, you know, something to be palatable to all. So we're going to start off with the star of the show, Havana three-year-old. Um, so we're going to use 30 mils of this. Despite spending three years in wood, it's still a young rum and I really want to explore the grassier green notes of this. Um, when I taste it straight, I get a load of smoky pear and this was like the cobbler itself, or my cobbler, the real inspiration for it. So I really wanted to bring that taste that I tasted through to the drink. So I've um, got 30 mils of banana in there. And then part of our pear element is going to be 10 mils of pear liqueur. Just to give it a bit of sweetness. And I'm just going to balance all that sweetness out with 10 mil dry fino sherry. Um, the sherry I'm using is Spanish. Um, the main reason I chose to use this sherry in particular is because it the main sort of note in it is um, walnut, there we go, walnut, um, and I really want to bring those woody elements through in the drink. So there's 10 mils in there, and then just give the drink a bit of smoke, bring all that smoked pear through, I'm using Talisker whiskey and literally just a mil of it, and that's just going to bring the smoke right through the drink. So literally just a mil of it, and that's really just going to lift it. And the second part of our parliament is pear puree. I'm using funkin just because throughout the year pears vary in sweetness. It's just really standardised a drink all the way through the year. So any bar can make it, any person. And I'm just going to balance all that with my walnut syrup. And again, just going to bring all the woody elements right the way through the drink again. And traditional cob. Um, the syrup is just boiled down crushed walnuts um, and then boiled them for about 10 minutes and strained it off and then made the gom one to one ratio. So not too thick but you know with still the good consistency. Uh, traditional cobblers didn't use um, citrus, they um, used the wine to like to bitter the flavour of it but I'm going to 10 mils just to give it a little bit of balance. So it's going to squeeze 10 mils of lime into there. Measure that out. I'm just going to call for a good hard shake. Break that off. There. Just gonna ice up my glass. So I'm gonna ice that up with crushed ice. And then I'm just gonna fine strain that off into the glass. Brilliant. I'm just going to round it off with a tiny dash of syrup and then give it a nice crown. Just a tad more ice. Now, the interesting thing about the cobbler, um, it was like the, one of the first drinks to really utilise ice as a serve, and funny enough, the straw. Of course, in those days, they didn't have plastic straws, they used like Dry pasta, weeds, sorry, reeds. So um, I'm going to go with no garnish and then just in homage to the drink, garnish it with a straw. Now, coming up with the name of the drink was really hard. It's probably the hardest part of the drink. And I know we've all had like really tough judges who've given us constant, you know, bad criticism, but hand on heart, my 
Tough as Joe's my girlfriend. Um, and this is the first drink she said she would really order if she went to the bar. So, in honour of her, this is Chelsea Cobbler. Thank you very much, Ben. Very well done. Right, just a couple of questions so that we can get into who you are and what you what makes you do what you do behind the bar. Um, who uh, who inspires you, uh, present or past, in the, um, in the industry at the minute? Well, I come from a really tight bartending community, so I guess the guys we work with day in day out, like we're really tight, good mates, and we all bounce off each other, bounce off ideas, and especially when it comes to competitions, we all gather together, and that's really what drives me and all of us forward. Right, good answer. Um, now, with all the all the different trends in bartending, be it looking forward, looking past, or just making the best of what what is currently out there, what's what trend in bartending really excites you? Um, well, I guess it goes back to school. I was a bit of a history buff, so classic cocktails, like especially cocktails have been lost over time. I mean, my recent favourite is The Last Word, it's just a classic chartreuse cocktail. And just, you know, cocktails that have just lost their way and come back and getting to learn about them and, you know, with really rich history, absolutely brilliant. That's what gets me going. Good stuff. If you could make a cocktail for anyone alive or dead, who would you want to make a cocktail for and what would you make? That's easy. Um, Marilyn Monroe. I've had a fascination for her, about her for like, since I can remember. Um, to serve her, just to provide service for her would be unbelievable and like, I wouldn't, the drink wouldn't be so important, like I'd just make something as, you know, as fruity as she is to be honest. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> uh, if, you, <laughs> if you could leave a legacy, uh, be, it, be it in the bar that you're working in or the town or city that you work or, or, or on a grander scale, wider and further afield, what would you want your legacy behind the stick to be? Well, I think in terms of bartending, so I strive to be the best I can be, but I'd always want to be remembered as someone who just did what they loved doing. Like, I could never imagine myself doing anything else, and just someone remembered for doing that, just that. Cool. So, so in that case, sum up your attitude to bartending in three words. Um, passionate. Um, I find it sort of exhilarating um, in terms of just busy Friday nights, adrenaline's pumping, and honest. Cool. Um, now, uh, if you could please describe for uh, for us, um, uh, do you have a favourite bar in the world? Where where is it and why? Um, well, if my if there's my ideal bar, I haven't been there just yet because I've always got my own ideas. Um, somewhere where I can have a quiet drink, really a nice cold cocktail, and just sort of chill, talking to the talking to the bartender as. I would like to talk to a customer. If someone could provide that sir, you know, the same service that I would want to give to a customer, then that would make my make my night. Good answer, Ben. Thank you very much.